the Monster Association executives versus the strongest monster on earth Orochi. This is a matchup that I have always wanted to do ever since I made Psycho Orochi vs Platinum S video. Certainly a very interesting idea to think about since the colors, or more specifically Black S, has stated that they have no intentions of serving Orochi, but more so just team up to take down the Hero Association. With this, it begs the question of can these executives ever hope to take down or for better words dethrone the Monster King Orochi? In this video, we will talk about how this fight would go, the different possibilities, how their abilities would interact with each other to figure out who would overwhelm the other. But before, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more of these One Punch Man matchup videos. Thank you. The Monster King Orochi has always been a terrifying and an overwhelming presence in the One Punch Man verse, stated to be the strongest monster on earth by both Koketsu and Gero Gero. The story goes to explain that this monster is simply a cut above the rest, and according to Morata, Orochi's disaster level is dragon or above, which is a similar statement said about Boros in one of one's interviews. Now, every fan who has been paying attention to the interviews and the story so far has expected Orochi to be a at least among the strongest characters in the entire series. However, even now, it still has been rather extremely difficult to determine exactly how strong he is. He only fought two times, one against somebody far weaker than him and one against a character that far exceeds him in so many ways. There exist two different fights of Orochi against Saitama, and therefore two different versions of Orochi. Obviously one is not canon anymore, but for the sake of building a very good perspective of how the story was or is portraying his level of strength, these two versions need to be discussed separately to gauge what the authors were planning for this character to be. The reason I'm saying this, One Punch Man is well known for retconning chapters and adding or removing certain plot events that could drastically change everything. Take an interview of Morata for example in 2018, where he stated that one does not intend for Orochi to get one-shotted by Saitama. Not only that, but he goes further to say that it should not be a problem to take a few punches from him. Rata also implied that a fight between Tatsumaki and Orochi would be of a high difficulty level. In other words, it seems like the authors intended for Orochi to be definitely extremely strong. The sole evidence for that is his pre retcon fight against Saitama, of which if you analyze it correctly, even Orochi's personality is quite different than the new one. As soon as he recognized that Saitama is the monster of Ghost Town and the one who took down both Elder Centipede and Goketsu, all that filled him at that time was excitement to fight, a virtue we've only seen before presented by the dominator of the universe Boros. He just wanted to fight the strongest to become the strongest. Unlike the new Orochi where you know, he just wanted Saitama to be a sacrifice so that he can be a god, completely takes away his aim to be the strongest combat wise. Not only did the fight go much longer, but Orochi surprisingly did much much better than the retcon version. Managed to blast away Saitama, catch him when he was clearly charging at him and shockingly dodged a punch from Saitama, which was crazy to read at that time. This perfectly goes in line with Murata's statements in 2018, saying that Orochi would not be like the other monsters that gets one-shotted by Saitama. I mean yes, he eventually got destroyed with a normal punch and Saitama was clearly holding back, but ask yourself this, when is Saitama ever not holding back? So in other words, this version of Orochi is meant to be that strong. Now passing to the retcon version, where it has so much importance lores but nothing that important when it comes to power scaling. Don't get me wrong, Orochi is still extremely strong and still one of the strongest monsters we've seen, but this time he actually gets one-shotted by Saitama. The only important ability he showcased was absorbing energy from the core of earth to produce a high destructive capacity attack called the Gaia Cannon, still to this day one of the strongest attacks in One Punch Man period. You can tell that the story now has other candidates to be called the strongest monster on earth, unlike what the authors intended things to go pre previously where the only contender for that title before was only Golden S, since even Murata was not sure who is the strongest between the two. Now let's talk about his general stats. You see, durability could be derived from the fact that he somehow survived Saitama's punch and didn't die instantly, although Saitama made sure to tell him that that was just a way to discipline him like his parents should've. So you could argue that at the end of the day, Saitama just 
didn't even intend to kill him. But if you want to see it from another perspective, multiple S-Class heroes legit used their strongest attacks against a chunk of Psycho Orochi's body and still couldn't kill it completely. Imagine what his durability would be against his full body. The only two characters we've seen that can certainly damage him are Saitama and Tatsumaki. Now when it comes to speed, we have absolutely no idea how fast his Ratcon version is compared to the other characters. And this is the most problematic issue when it comes to power scaling him. Obviously he's not slow, but how fast he is we sadly just don't know. Now he obviously has many other abilities and forms, the most notable one is that he is a genius like Garu who can copy techniques at this spot. Morata states that Orochi's water stream rock smashing fist is just as good as Garu's, which is honestly frightening since he managed to copy it from first glance. This monster, in my opinion, has been done dirty by the authors. I mean his defeat certainly rhymes with the theme of One Punch Man, but me, same as all of you I presume, just wanted to see more of him, since as Morata stated, him and One's original plan is to match him up against 8 of the S-Class heroes, and to be frankly honest, that would have been great to see. But with all of this, can Orochi take on all the cadres at once? Now 4 months ago, I've made the most viewed video on my channel which is the Cadres vs Boros. I explained in details the abilities and stats of each member, I'll suggest you go and check it out. But as usual, I'll give a brief summary of who they are and what they can do. Now the Cadres are the strongest monsters within the association. The group consists of egomaniacs evil monsters that cares only about annihilating the hero association. This particular group is allegedly stronger than the S-Class heroes, clearly implied in chapter 126 that although the S-Class heroes holds monstrous strength compared to the other characters, the Cadres are the true monsters who deserves that claim. This group consists of 9 dragon level monsters, obviously excluding Gero Gero and the other candidates. Now we've never fully seen how their teamwork would function if they ever decided to cooperate. Gero Gero in chapter 126, while losing miserably to Tatsumaki, says the following statement, a team that consists of Black S and Homeless Emperor can annihilate anyone. I still consider this statement to be crazy, especially since Giro Giro surely have heard about King, fought Tatsumaki, and obviously knows about Orochi. But nonetheless, let's discuss each member one by one. Starting with Elder Centipede and Goketsu, both has been defeated quite easily by Saitama. Janos was stupid enough to conclude that multiple heroes such as King, Tatsumaki, Atomic Samurai, Flashy Flash and even Saitama is required to defeat Koketsu. That's obviously ridiculously not true. Other than toying with both Bakuzan and Suiryu, he has absolutely no feet to gauge exactly where he falls. Elder Centipede on the other hand is known for his humongous size and his regen ability. And according to Gero Gero, the most reliable character in the entire show, only 4 top tier heroes can manage to defeat him, which is King, Tatsumaki, Blast and Metal Knight. Even a character like Bomb said it that they just cannot defeat him. However, as I said in my previous videos, One Punch Man fights plays a lot on the concept of matchups. Tier A is superior to tier C for example, but due to matchups, sometimes a character from C can manage to defeat a character from A. He can possibly have a regeneration core, same as say Centipede and Orochi. Now jumping to the infamous 3 jumping superstar cadres, Black S is who I would consider the most troublesome and dangerous cadre. Even when you include matchups, he would still be extremely difficult to deal with. He has 54 trillion cells, stated by Homeless Emperor to be each as strong as an A-class hero. He can corner, react and damage multiple heroes easily defeated Atomic Samurai with relative ease and reacted to Saitama's zero punching Garu. Flashy Flash later stated that the man who punched Garu moved just like Blast, which makes this mind blowing and even much crazier. But as we all know, Black S can merge to create two transformations that completely increases his power level drastically, the Golden and the Platinum state. As soon as Atomic Samurai lays eyes on the Platinum transformation, he states that his key is immeasurable. Now if you exclude the top of the top such as Saitama, Blast, Garu, Boros, and most recently Void, we have never seen a speed feat of this caliber. Platinum S, admitted by Flashy Flash to be even faster than him, and Flash is a character who has been praised by Saitama saying that he is kinda fast, putting Platinum obviously to be one of the fastest characters we have ever seen. Now jumping to Homeless Emperor, even though stated by himself to be physically as strong as a normal human, means 
he lacks both AP and durability, he is still very dangerous due to his spherical energy beams. Not only are they extremely powerful, but can certainly be spammed infinitely, meaning he just doesn't exert any type of energy to produce them, which if you ask me, this is a cheated ability. However, in close quarter combat, he is most definitely doomed. Now jumping to fewer ugly, neon and gums, they have literally no remarkable feats except of toying with low tier S class heroes. Fewer ugly was only able to do what he did against Amai Mask since ugliness is literally his weakness. He goes next to destroy tank top master, but that's literally irrelevant. But I think his most impressive feat was matching up with Darkshine's super alloy double bazooka in terms of AP. However, I still think if it weren't for acid, Darkshine would have defeated him. Neon fought and lost against prep time drive knight, toyed with multiple low tier heroes, and he is a coward that runs away anytime he sees a troublesome or a stronger opponent. And last but not least, Gums in my opinion is the most disappointing cadre, since he only fought against Big God, and even Tank Top Master was able to hold his own against his crushing teeth. Now the last two members are Rover and Evil Natural Water. Both has very impressive feats, such as Rover tanking Bomb and Bank combined attack and getting up, while Elder Centipede was destroyed by the same attack and he only survived because he can regenerate. Evil Natural Water reacted to Garu when he blessed everybody to save Silver Fang, but also gets completely destroyed by a condensed punch from Darkshine. Rover is also stated in Drive Knight's data to submit to beings who are stronger than him. Now, I want to note that all of these characters has done more than what I have mentioned, but as I said, this is just a brief summary of what they can do. The cadres can accomplish a lot if they teamed up, certainly something I would have loved to see. But with all of this being said, can they really hope to defeat the Monster King Orochi? Now, strictly speaking, as I said in Orochi's part, it's pretty clear that the author's statements and views has changed drastically over the years. We've got interviews from 2012 till 2018, six years has passed ever since and obviously tons of things has changed. Take this statement from Murata for example, insinuating that Orochi would be overwhelmed by the S-Class hero's speed as they toy with him mercilessly, showing that he possesses nothing but pure strength and size. This gravely downplays Orochi even though at the same year, the authors were glazing him non-stop, saying for example that the Dark Matter thieves would be soloed by Orochi easily even if they planned perfectly for it. And at the same year, Murata is certainly not sure who would win in a fight between Orochi and Golden S, stating that one excels at techniques and the other possesses speed and power. You see, if we are strictly talking about the pre con version of Orochi, it would not be far-fetched to say that his feats far exceeds anything we've seen from any cadre. Catching Saitama when he was clearly charging at him and dodging him right after were mind-blowing feats, so much so that it actually got people at that time thinking about Boros versus Orochi, which is actually crazy, right? I even doubt that Platinum S with his amazing speed would be dodging Saitama if he was charging at him that way. However, things as I said has certainly changed. The retcon version is mentally less combative, but before we gauge on how this fight would go, let's talk about the Kadri's arguments. First of all, Giro Giro has stated that if Homeless Emperor and Black S team up, they can defeat anyone, while Giro Giro sometimes just has dumb takes. Logically speaking, in this particular case, she does have insights on both parties. However, in chapter 115, Orochi reveals that he has concealed his form with a mask and put up a front of obeying Gero Gero. It could be that Gero Gero had no idea how strong unmasked Orochi is, which would actually make sense. What substantiated this for me is that in chapter 132, Orochi tried to absorb Psychos and she literally asks him this, when did you possess such power? So her first statement now holds little weight when it comes to Orochi and Tatsumaki, since Gero Gero just did not know any better. Now let's second talk about Fury Ugly, Neon and Rogue. Narratively speaking, Rover and Neon would be ineffective in this whole fight. Both would certainly run away if they get tagged one time by Orochi, and Fewer Ugly would just struggle with Orochi's tentacles that can actually use Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist. Now, for Homeless Emperor, Black S, Koketsu, and Elder Centipede, they might have a chance to inflict considerable damage if they coordinate their attacks correctly. But if they don't, then Orochi literally has an answer for everyone. He has already displayed his supremacy against Koketsu, which sends Elder Centipede 
beats a regenerative core just like Garu did and if not, he can just blast him non-stop. Chooses to attack Homeless Emperor with extreme speed and one-shots him since he is literally a glass cannon. And last but not least, he would just burn all of Black S's cells. Although the author stated that Black S wouldn't be afraid of Orochi even at his strongest state due to his overwhelming numbers. However, he would still lose to massive destructiveness as that was implied to be his weakness. You see, that's exactly how this would go if they don't coordinate their attacks carefully. But if they somehow do and we choose to ignore the narrative of the story, Homeless Emperor and Rover together with their spherical energy beams would certainly barrage him non-stop if the other members chooses to distract Orochi completely. And remember, as durable as Orochi is, Garu mentions that he also has a regenerative core. If they manage to reach it, either willingly or by chance, they would certainly kill him. In this particular case, it can actually go either way, depends on what I have stated before. Coordinations, ignoring the narrative and other stuff I'll be including later in this video. Now what about Black S transforming to Platinum S and teaming up with the others to destroy Orochi? Platinum S versus Orochi by itself is a very controversial matchup. Platinum has the speed and Orochi has the destructiveness. But in this particular case, all of the other cadres together would make up for Platinum S's lack of destructiveness. Sooner or later, with speed, Platinum would reach Orochi's core even if it's by chance. He can also protect everyone with his speed since there is absolutely no argument for Orochi to be remotely near that level of speed. So in this particular case, I think the cadres would win. However, I know a lot of you are scratching your heads and saying, wait a second Yasin, Orochi does have a wing con which is his Gaia cannon, capable of incinerating everyone if he just uses it. You see, the two problems that entails with the Gaia cannon is that one, Orochi needs to gather its energy from the depths of earth. I'm entirely not sure if he can just do it if he was on the surface, so the fight stage could influence this fight immensely. But for the benefit of the doubts and we say he can, we end up with the second problem which is, that attack takes too much time to charge. Saitama certainly always lets his opponents charge their attacks cause it just wouldn't matter. But diabolical characters like the Kadres would not be that generous. The main point of jumping is to not let your opponents use any of their special attacks. But to be fair, Orochi at the end of the day is a combat genius. If they are busy fighting his tentacles while he is charging the Gaia cannon up, he would certainly be the last monster standing. The only problem would be Platinum S. You just cannot distract him with that level of speed. So to sum up everything, for case number one, pre recon version just has better feats and more superior to the new one. Winning against all of the cadres would make sense for a character who caught and dodged Saitama. Case number two, the retcon version versus cadres can go either way depends on the following situations. One, if they coordinate their attacks or not. Two, if they go by the narrative or not. Three, if the Gaia cannon would land or not. Either way, I always go by the narrative so I think Orochi has a higher chance. And case number three, including Platinum S would obviously decrease his chances of winning since Platinum S versus Orochi is already a very controversial matchup and adding the colors together would increase Platinum S's chance of victory. Let me know if you agree or disagree and please make sure to join the Discord server. Until next time, please take good care. These two versions need to be discussed separately to gauge what the authors were planning for this <coughs> for this particular character to be. <coughs> since even Morata was not sure who is since even Morata was not sure who since even Morata was not sure who is the You see, durability could be derived from the fact that he somehow still survived Saitama's punch. <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> uh, what a but I think his most impressive feat was matching up with Darkshine's super alloy du double. I said it in French, double. <laughs> But I think his most impressive feat was matching up with Darkshine's super alloy double bazooka in terms double bazooka, bazooka, bazooka. <clears throat> but I think his most impressive feat was matching up with Darkshine's super alloy du In this particular case, it can- <laughs>